Hi, my name is Alice, and today I'll be reimagining Alice in Wonderland, the classic fairy tale story using laser cutter and a 3D printer. So we're going to use Alice as our frame of reference here. And the reason I choose laser cutter is because, you know, the figure of Alice is a relatively complex part and uh, 3D printers does not necessarily do a great job at printing those parts. But I also needed something that is precise and uh, that can um, do some material that wouldn't change under water. And uh, so acrylic was a great choice and the laser cutter was my tool of choice. And in order to print um, the Alice figure that you see right here, I just sketched it up in Illustrator and uh, played around with the setting for the laser cutter to um, get this little figure here. The outside line you can see here are, um, for me, it was 85% power at 5% uh, speed. And the faint line you can see raspberry right here, they are at 44% power and 100% speed. And this is going to vary. Depends on the laser cutter you use. So next we're going to tackle the 3D printing part and uh, like I said, Alice today is going to be changing but she's not the one that is changing. It is a mushroom that I'm going to print next to Alice that is going to change. And in order to do that, I'll be using PVA and PLA. So PLA is a very beginner friendly material. It's really easy to print on a 3D printer. However, PVA on the other hand is a little bit more advanced. And uh, the reason that it is a more advanced material is because it can absorb moisture from the air. And uh, so it can easily clog the machine. It can burn in the print core. And sometimes you'll hear a popping sound when it is printing. That's water evaporating from the heat of print core. So the chance of failure with PVA is significantly higher. So we're going to focus on how to have a successful print with PVA. So like we mentioned before, PVA can absorb moisture from the air. Therefore, to have a successful print, you want to remove that moisture from your filament. And to do that, you can either put it in a dehydrator or sometimes it works if you just have a very stable heating source. And for the filament, I used the Ultimaker PVA. I heated, um, you want to heat it anywhere between 45 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. And uh, lastly, make sure to always store your filament in a resealable bag immediately after use. So even um, when you dried your filament properly before using it, you will still want to keep an eye out for your print environment. You want a relatively low humidity level uh, in your printing environment and definitely keep an eye out. For me, I started off um, by most 3D modeling the mushroom I'm going to be printing and I did a very small scale testing. And this uh, test really revealed to me two problems. Number one, uh, the support material is quite extensive. Therefore, I modified my uh, final model to not needing uh, any support material at all, which greatly decreased the printing time. I also tested out how water soluble the PVA filament is, and uh, it is quite apparent it dissolves relatively fast, especially in warm water and with a bit of stirring. However, the more tightly packed the filament is, it has less um, surface area to interact with, wa with the water which makes it dissolve slightly slower. That also lead to my design decision in my final model. In order to help your PVA to dissolve faster, you wanna use a plier or other things to remove the bigger part and allow the rest of it to break away more effectively. And in my case, however, I believe someone broke my part when they removed it from the 3D printer. And, but I didn't really mind it that much because it was going to be, I was gonna take that part off anyway. So I just used this glue right here. It is a PVA glue that's used for book binding. But really any water, water soluble glue should work. But um, I used this PVA glue, glued them like back together, but still allow them to break apart relatively fast. So you can see in my 3D model, basically I model two mushrooms separately, one bigger one, one smaller one, and I merge the model together. This process is going to be different depends on what software you're going to use, what kind of slicer, what kind of CAD model. Um, it's very specific to each person, but uh, the CAD model I use will be linked in the description. And now we have the model and the laser cut part ready. I just want to get everything assembled. So something I did is I cut the plywood to size. I measured it out, cut it to size. 
and uh, therefore I can have both parts together. And I also, as you can see here, um, painted the Alice just to give it more clear um, definition tells you that is Alice um, and uh, I also painted a backdrop and with all those underway I assembled them and the fun part begins all the all the components are in a clear container and I just go ahead and filled it with water and unfortunately the container t turns out to be unsuitable it starts to leak a little bit so I had to switch it out but nonetheless the dissolving part begins <laughs> 